teachers often use games as a way of making a practice of particularly basic facts a little bit more palatable. This game here is obviously based on toilet humour, so the boys uh, love it. But let's talk about how you can get the most out of a game. In this case here, you, you spin the two spinners, and if I spun up, for example, seven sixes, uh, I would work out that that's 42, and you move ahead two spaces, so you have to understand that we're only moving ahead by what the units or the ones digit is. Now that's all well and good, and we could have people playing this, and the children might like all the sort of the, the funny parts of the game, but what matters to me is how we monitor this. For example, how do we know that a child didn't say uh, six sevens are 48? So in all these games, we want a monitoring process, and I'd just like to focus just on the back of this game as an example. In here, one player takes on the role as, as the plumbing inspector, so to speak, and that player might still be playing the game, but they have a set of plumbing specifications which have the answers there. So over a period of time, we would check that six sevens are, in fact, 42. The other thing is having some sort of monitoring sheet. What it does, it allows the teacher, as they're coming around in the classroom, perhaps one of those big black markers. As children learn certain uh, table facts here, they could be blotting them out. So over a period of time, we get a bit of a picture about which table facts the children are secure with and which are not. And that'll allow us to focus the teaching on the specific facts that groups of children don't know. To get the most out of a board game, at times we may want to focus on specific ideas. So let me give you an example. Say you found that your children uh, aren't so good at the multiplying by four, the, the four times table. What you might get them to do is hold one spinner there and spin the other one. That way they're continually, so this will be eight fours, then you spin again and it's seven fours and so forth. However, I would also want them to hold the top spinner on four and spin the one underneath. So that would be four sixes, for example. Now the reason I want to do that is just to, one, I'm emphasizing the four times table, but two, I'm emphasizing what's called the commutative property of multiplication. That is, the order in which the multiplication appears doesn't make a difference. So four sixes, six fours will still give me 24. I often meet children who know a table fact one way, but never relate it to the other. It's a you know, it's turnaround fact, so to speak. 